Rome, Italy, a team of biochemists have been selected to study their samples at the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility, ESRF, in Grenoble, France. It is the week before going, and they are deep in preparation. Here you can see some crystals of uh, the protein that is called neuroglobin and that is one of the proteins that we study here that protect the brain. My project is aimed to uh, understand some mechanism, um, some dynamics of our protein and I think the basis for understanding this is to know the structure of the protein. Meanwhile, a team of geologists in Bayreuth, Germany, are also getting ready for their time at ESRF. In Bayreuth, we are preparing our material for experiments at ESRF. Uh, we are going to study newly synthesized boron phase, high pressure boron phase, and study its behavior at high pressures. To start our experiments at ESRF, we need to prepare our cells in advance. This is a diamond anvil cell, which is used to generate pressure on a sample. We create pressure on a sample using these screws. When we are sure that we have purified the protein very well, we can crystallize it. At the beginning, we screen a lot of conditions of crystallization by the robot. Then we check all of the conditions. Right now, I'm looking at the drops that we have just set with the robot because afterwards, I'm going to produce a plate like this, so a bigger one, with the same crystallization conditions. And from here, I'm going to fish the crystals that I'm going to bring to the synchrotron. Purifying a protein, crystallizing and running an experiment can be several months of work. Everything is concentrated into the moment in which you fish that crystals and you dip it in liquid nitrogen. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Well done. Go ahead. Fishing the crystal is the crucial moment of this operation. The, there are three difficulties. You have to be very delicate because crystals are very fragile. You have to, have to be fast because the drop is drying. And, uh, and you have to freeze it very quickly. So in these few seconds, uh, your experiment could fail. We got a new face of boron. It's semiconductor, it's not superconducting, but it's quite hard material, second elemental material after diamond, which has such high hardness. And uh, recently we managed in synthesis of single crystals of high pressure, high temperature phase of boron. As you can see, this is quite long crystals, it's 25 microns. Now we are preparing for our experiments at YSRF using synchrotron radiation for investigation of that phase. pressure experiment will be done at the ESRF. There is no other way to see what happens with the material in situ. We need synchrotron radiation and simultaneously very high pressures. Application, I can only speculate at the moment, but one speaks about alternative to silicon-based electronic and application in semiconductor industry. Teams arrive at ESRF. The Italians will have only 24 hours of experiment time to collect data from their 60 samples, so they need a good night's sleep. We are here in the beamline, and we are waiting for the, the robot, the sample changer, because now it doesn't work. The problem is that and the samples are very icy, and then the sample changer robot gets problems to mount or unmount the sample. Okay, seems that the sample changer works. And we are happy for that. What is it? Uh, 
In our lab we can only see the crystals, but we don't know if they diffract or not. So when we come here we can see if they diffract and then we decide if we collect the data or not. The quality of this data is very encouraging. Uh, since these crystals were manipulated, uh, it, mean, it implies that the manipulation preserves crystal order. So it indicates that we can proceed to further experiments. Now we are collecting the data for our first crystal. The collection data will take uh, around an half an hour. So now we are free to relax and see what happened. In ID9, the Bayreuth team begin four days of experiments, beginning with powder diffraction of boron, the new material they have created. We are at the very beginning of the experiment. We are already have put our cell and we are getting new diffraction patterns and then we will increase pressure in order to obtain the equation of state of this material. We are decreasing pressure in the cell now. At the beginning we had 70 gigapascal and now we are going to go with very small steps of about one or maximum two gigapascal down. We have reached already uh, 66 gigapascal and we certainly see changes in the diffraction pattern. It means that some transition or some change of the structure happen. It is a very interesting phenomena of structure change under pressure and we would like to see what symmetry we have at high pressures and at low pressures. Each user team at ESRF is assigned a local contact, a scientist to help them on the beamline. Their role is threefold. Taking care of the users, helping them with the experiments, the other part is naturally taking care of the beamline, installing new equipment, and the third part is making our own research. We worked with him very often, and he's very, very helpful. And we like this beamline and working with Michael. So now it's half past five in the afternoon. We are almost in the middle of our experiments and so hopefully the system is not going to crash again and we can finish all the crystals in a decent hour. Now by thawing the crystals, which were previously at 100 Kelvin, so at the minus 170 degrees Celsius, we allow the reaction to proceed. So whatever had to happen, happened, we refroze it and now we are collecting data hoping to see a structure in which the reaction has taken place. We are not going to know whether this procedure was successful until we go back home, analyze the data and have a look at the structure. It's very daring, very brave to try to have a look at reactions within a protein crystal. It's not something which is easily achieved.